We begin with Saudi Arabia and the methods the kingdom still uses to silence its critics, sometimes permanently. It's been more than a month now since the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Riyadh reaffirmed this past week that it was a rogue operation, but its story keeps changing. And news has surfaced of another Saudi journalist, Turki al Jasser, jailed eight months ago, since tortured to death. Al Jasser ran what he thought was an anonymous account on Twitter, a platform that used to be a proxy public square for Saudis, but where an army of trolls now poisons debate, harasses dissidents, and spreads misinformation. The mastermind of that campaign has been Saud al Qahtani who worked behind the scenes as an enforcer for the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. As his boss conducted a charm offensive on the Western news media, al Qahtani was ensuring the journalists back home towed the line and the critics stayed silent. He was reportedly fired over the Khashoggi murder, but the chilling effect of his work remains. Our starting point this week is Riyadh. two weeks, the Saudis insisted nothing happened. The kingdom has given all kinds of explanations about what happened and who is responsible. After the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, those initial denials from Riyadh, undone by all the evidence. The announcements from Saudi Arabia cut against what Turkish investigators say happened inside this building. And the ensuing geopolitical public relations disaster. One might have thought that the Saudi authorities dealing with the media would be on their best behavior, at least for a while. The death of a Saudi Arabian journalist, given all the talk. The case of Turki al Jassa, a blogger jailed earlier this year, and whose death after torture was revealed this past week, could disprove that. Riyadh's war against journalism and criticism within goes on. Certainly, the message would appear to be that uh, the Saudi authorities uh, can still uh, intimidate and carry things out against its critics, even after the death of Jamal Khashoggi. They will want to reimpose that climate of fear. It shows the nervousness as well of the Saudi authorities right now. They fear, perhaps, that the whole Khashoggi affair might encourage and embolden critics within the kingdom to be more vocal. Some might claim that the Khashoggi murder hasn't had an impact on Saudi Arabia, that the country will continue its harassment, assassinations and kidnappings of journalists. But I don't believe this is the case, especially since there remain doubts over the circumstances of al Jassa's kidnapping and murder. Some claim he was murdered in March 2018. Others say it was days ago. So it's possible his case predates Khashoggi's. Al Jasser was not the only person. There is a journalist, famous journalist and opinion uh, columnist, Tarrad Al Amri. He has disappeared. Ali Al Dufairi, who, who worked for Al Jazeera Arabic, has gone silent for over two years. We don't know if he's in jail or not. Isra Al Ghamgham, they want to send her to, to death, and because she actually used social media to, uh, to write about the protest in the eastern province in, in Qatif. People who are who were imprisoned for using Twitter or Facebook, you're talking about thousands maybe. There is no mystery over how Jamal Khashoggi met his fate. He was lured to the Saudi consulate in Istanbul and walked into a trap. How Turki al Jasser was exposed and arrested is less clear. However, all roads would appear to lead to Saud al Kahtani. Al Kahtani is a feared figure in Saudi Arabia. He's ex military, an advisor to the royal court appointed by the crown prince they call MBS, Mohammed bin Salman. He was responsible for directing the Saudi troll army that went after the kingdom's critics online and reportedly spent so much time poring over Twitter debates he was nicknamed Mr. Hashtag. Last year, Al Kahtani tweeted a warning to Saudi dissidents telling them that using an alias on Twitter would not be enough to hide their identity, hinting that he had secret ways of finding them. And just last month, the New York Times reported that Saudi Arabia had embedded a spy inside Twitter's operation to monitor accounts critical of Riyadh, accounts such as the one belonging to the late Turki al Jasser. 
When Mohammed bin Salman took power, Ghatani became very important, perhaps one of three key people surrounding the crown prince. His principal role was to steer the electronic army towards supporting Mohammed bin Salman's decisions. It also involved attacking critics. He's not only implicated in Khashoggi's murder, but in the kidnapping of former Lebanese Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri. He is a very powerful man, not only in terms of shaping public opinion, but in executing Mohammed bin Salman's decisions. Since Mohammed bin Salman uh, formally took power, he increased the Saudi government control over the media. One of the reporters or editors told me, like, we used to go to the king and he would tell us, you know, uh, talk about this, don't talk about that. Now it is Saud al-Ghahtani and people who like him through a WhatsApp group will tell the reporters what to write and tell editors what to write. There's no meeting. So uh, this is just another uh, increase in the level of control over the media. Given that hegemonic control over the mainstream media, the real political debate in Saudi Arabia occurs online, primarily on Twitter. The government could have done what its counterparts in Iran did, ban the platform outright. Instead, it allows Twitter to operate in the country and takes on its critics there, both overtly through official government accounts and covertly through trolling, false followers, hacking and surveillance. And when the authorities hunt down political opponents, they don't stop at the border. Omar Abdulaziz is a Saudi blogger based in Canada, whose calls for political reform back home are delivered to hundreds of thousands over Twitter and YouTube. He says that months before Jamal Khashoggi walked into the consulate in Istanbul, Saudi officials contacted him, trying to arrange a meeting at their embassy in Ottawa. Abdulaziz refused. Even in the diaspora, they're not immune. They were trying to uh, bug, uh, you know, Omar Abdul Aziz and get into his uh, his accounts and get into his social media platforms. And that's why some of them are stopping their activism. No margin of opposition, no matter how small or no matter how slim, is going to be accepted or tolerated. I'm a target of the Saudi government because of what I write. Every time I get an email with a with a link, I'm suspicious especially from people I don't know. And uh, this fake BBC journalist, she called herself Tanya Stalin, and the fact that they didn't use a BBC email also made it clear to me that was a, a fake account. They continue to try. I mean, in the past week they have stopped, but uh, they are trying other ways to go into our computer and our emails. In Riyadh, the latest official explanation of the Khashoggi murder version 6.0 of the story, places the blame on five allegedly rogue operatives who, according to the foreign minister, could face the death penalty. Saud al kahtani faces a travel ban, but nothing more. While his boss, who apparently was completely unaware of the operation that killed one of his most prominent critics, can be seen on state-run television, meeting with investors, visiting soldiers wounded in the war in Yemen, and smiling for selfies with Saudi children. Mohammed bin Salman is the crown prince and really the almost de facto ruler of Saudi Arabia has a, a huge challenge. Uh, his image has been shattered by this, uh, certainly internationally. So how does he actually manage to revivify that carefully managed image as the reformer, the man of change? So the Saudi media and the royal court are clearly going about uh, their business of trying to show him as the responsible leader, statesman, who has Saudi interests at heart. Uh, I think it's questionable whether this will work right now. Certainly it won't work, I think, internationally. It might work in some quarters in Saudi Arabia, uh, and that's obviously what they are hoping. Saudi Arabia has never been a beacon of, of freedom of speech and freedom of expression, but I think that the Saudi crown prince has taken things to the next level. There is no tolerance for any kind of deflection from the regime or from the regime's narrative and the regime's stories. A lot of Arab regimes in the region, uh, including the Saudi, including the Egyptian regime, including the Syrian regime, have used this whole logic of keeping stability. We are trying to preserve stability. We're trying to keep you safe. 
and this is a way of trying to keep control of the people and to keep them in check and to halt any form of opposition or freedom of expression.